Next up, big idea number two. People have lamented why so little progress, so little improvement and economic development has happened east of Troost Avenue, what has been the symbolic geographic racial divide in the city. Now the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce has agreed to throw its entire weight and influence behind changing that. The Chamber has picked the Troost Corridor for unprecedented focus and civic attention. Today is a big day, a big day for Big KC and for the Chamber's Big Five. And our total commitment is to work on transforming the east side of Kansas City. Anybody here give me a drum roll? I have never seen such a broad spectrum of support to help our community. We've got business, civic, philanthropic leadership here. So no more talk, no more lamenting, no more commiserating. It's now time to kind of roll the sleeves up, pick up some hammers, some, ta some, some nails, some saws and other tools, and let's get something done. Please welcome to the podium the new executive director of Urban Neighborhood Initiatives, Diane Cleaver, and the chair of the board, Mark Jorgensen, president and CEO of U.S. Bank in Kansas City. Big idea number two. So what have you done? We've heard all about this, the Truce Corridor now. We've been busy in the latter part of 2011 and all of 2012 in planning, in planning uh, to a great uh, extent with all of our neighborhood partners, and we consider them partners. Uh, Diane's been uh, in, uh, intimately involved in that as well. I'll let her speak. Yeah, I'm not sure where we were last time we spoke, but you know, we, f we formed a 501c3, a different uh, UNI, Urban Neighborhood Initiative organization to move this forward. Uh, we have a great board, uh, one of our major assets, and uh, we have hired full-time staff, as Mark alluded to, and we have continued to um, fine-tune our action agenda in partnership with our neighborhoods, which we know is the only way it's going to be successful. So we've had meetings after meeting after meeting. Improving the health, the job, and education opportunities for neighborhoods generally around Troost Avenue, US 71 between 22nd and 52nd streets was the sort of mandate here. So let's talk about those. Um, how about health? How is that going to improve as a result of what you're doing on the Truce Corridor there? Well, I think what you'll be hearing from us in the not too distant future are some uh, measurable outcome objectives and some indicators that we'll be checking along the way. We're not ready to tell you exactly what those are yet, but to a great extent we're talking about uh, neighborhood and community health and safety. Uh, and there are many kinds of things that we know we can do to make, uh, to make that happen. Uh, things around reducing crime, uh, neighborhood uh, block watches, uh, we believe increasing, the, and the neighborhoods have said, uh, making them more digitally literate is a way to increase the safety of their neighborhoods. So we have a number of ideas that we're gonna line up in a prioritized way to make that happen, and then we're gonna lay out some measures for it. I mentioned a couple things too, Nick. On the, um, the health side, fresh food corridor is a name we'd like to see attached to this particular area. We've already planted, been involved in planting orchards. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, in installing a number of different gardens throughout the, uh, the catchment area. In addition, as you uh, I'm sure well know, John Bluford is seeking to establish a grocery store that's going to have a lot more healthy choices. On the digital side, uh, we met last week with a company. We can't announce things yet, but it's a very promising partnership with a technology company that everybody in this room knows and I'm really excited about what we can do there in terms of access to technology for the folks again in the UNI uh, catchment area. Some of the skepticism about this particular effort in the general media has been you know what needs to happen here is spurring jobs in this area. What can you report to us today about your efforts in terms of helping to increase jobs in the area that you're trying to help? We're looking at what we can do to bring new employers to the area. We're looking at what we can do to match up individuals living in the area with existing jobs, what we can do to accelerate that pathway and make people more ready to take those jobs, make those employers more open and accessible to those individuals. 
Um, so we're looking at placing new businesses and connecting and job training. We're looking at all of those things. One of the concerns has also come out is, well, we've heard it all before. People wanting to help this area. It's never happened. What, what's going to be different about this? What is different about this effort versus <coughs> other efforts to try and help the Truce Corridor? One thing I would say <clears throat> is it's very important to recognize that a lot has happened in this area. And uh, part of what we want to do, as you and I, is tell that story. A lot of progress has been made in that area, but that's not what you hear about the area. There's been housing development. There's been a reduction in crime. There have been new businesses, new small businesses to come in. Many things that the neighborhood residents have worked on over the years. So things have been happening. We believe that we can be a partner and an accelerator to really move that forward in a, in a big five kind of way. The other thing that I think is critically important is the individuals around the table at UNI, the backing of the Chamber of Commerce and partnership with uh, you know, United Way has really put its name out front and the individuals sitting at the table, you could not ask for a, a better board, uh, those who make things happen, those who are committed uh, and, con and will continue to do so. So I think these are some of the things, and, and we understand that this has to be a long-term effort. Our, our board is telling ourselves over and over again, we can't be in here for two or three years and expect major change. We know we have to be committed for the long-term. That's what it will take to make these kinds of changes. Now, going to our sage think tank on this, I mean, when you came up with the big five ideas, you, you did pick these very complicated, systematic problem kind of areas. Uh, you didn't pick, you know, let's make Kansas City the city of fountains and things like that, or the youth soccer capital, which some people wanted, <laughs> or the youth, you know, youth um, sports capital of, of America. You picked these very complicated, hard kinds of subject areas, didn't you? Jim and I always knew we were going to, but hook or crook, pick an urban core project because we do believe it's a moral imperative. But. I remember the meeting that we had, the No Bad Ideas meeting we had with a group of urban leaders. And it was people from these neighborhoods that said, what we don't need is another Saturday where 100 people show up and fix 10 roofs. We need opportunity in our lives to move ourselves forward. We need third grade reading efficiencies. We need the basic things that can make these neighborhoods come alive again. And it didn't come from anybody up here, it came from people in that group and it, it's exactly what they want and it is the most difficult of the big five at all and it will, and it will take a long-term business approach to get it done. Russ? And it's the most transformational for Kansas City and I'm proud of the chamber for picking an issue like this or a, a, an initiative like this that they could have passed on, the business community could have passed on and turned its back on but they didn't and uh, congratulations goes to those Greg Graves and Jim Heater and of course Diane and, and Mark but we have to stick at it. This is a long-term uh, project, as Diane said. But long-term, I mean, this is going to be a decades-long project, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. 